Bloomberg Radio Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. In response to an increasing global call to recycle a growing number of materials, an investment of 46 million rand has been made by paper and plastics packaging company Impact into a new recycling facility. Dylan Slater tells us more. The Springs-based recycling facility of Impact has commissioned a new recycling plant able to process liquid packaging, the bulk of which is cartons. Prior to the commissioning of this plant, only one other plant nearby had the capacity to handle such material. This other plant still operates, but is smaller and uses different technology. Impact Recycling MD John Hunt explains why Impact decided to commission the plant. There's been a, a big growth in demand for um, corrugated boxes and safety markets in the last couple of years, with new manufacturers coming on board. And um, it's tightened up the supply and availability of those materials, and we're already recycling them at a very high uh, rate in South Africa. So this was an opportunity to get access to a new fibre stream. Um, there's large volumes of liquid packaging that are currently going to landfill and the opportunity was to go and collect those, recycle them and recover the paper and the plastics that's, uh, that are, are, are their components and use those as a substitute from some of the other fibre that we've been using. Liquid packaging is made from, from very high quality virgin fibres, um, mostly grown in Scandinavia and places like that and it makes a very really good quality addition to some of the products that we make. So that fibre we then take and use in our manufacture of cardboard, paper for cigarette boxes, uh, sorry, matches, match boxes and things like that. Um, and uh, that way we, we're taking a product from that was on the landfill site, processing it and then making new value added products with it. The liquid packaging recycling plant uses a simple method that comprises hydropulping in which a small volume of water is added to a larger volume of packaging material. An agitator then causes friction, which separates the different layers of material. John explains in further detail. How this particular process works is that the, the collection business, which is generally impact recycling, collects a lot of material, generally in loose form, individual cartons come together. We press them into big rectangular bales, which weigh about 800 kilograms a piece. Those bales are delivered to the mill, they're put onto a conveyor, the wires are cut off and to separate the, the fibre again. Then it goes into a large um, tank with water in it and a big agitator in the bottom, very much like a domestic um, food processor. The agitator then mixes the, 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 um, the water and the, and the fibre that you put in there and because of this particular process operates with a very low level of water, the fibres rub against each other and they eventually separate themselves from the plastic. So it's a very efficient way of removing fibre without breaking up the plastic, um, the plastic that's, that is coated in. The problem if you break up all the plastic as well is that those plastic shards go into your paper and they, they stick to the fibre, they, they melt when the, when the paper is heated to, to, to dry it, etc. and cause problems on the paper machine. So this way you get a clean separation, really good high quality fibre one way, and your plastic and aluminium foil goes in a separate direction uh, with a very low content of fibre on it. And both streams have a potential to, obviously the fibre into our paper making processes and the plastic into you know, recycled fi uh, plastic moulded products. At the end of the process, two separate materials emerge, which are paper pulp and plastic sleeves that are embedded with a small volume of aluminium foil. John runs us through the uses of these materials. So the fibre so goes into making, making uh, paper. We, in this particular mill, um, Impact uh, Springs Mill, we make cotton board and industrial products such as core board, matchbox papers, and various other grades of industrial paper. Um, and we can use these, this particular fibre wherever you have a particular requirement for the strength that it brings, the bulk uh, that this particular fibre brings. So in our cotton board machine, we make uh, multiple layers, a paper consisting of multiple layers, and you can use different grades of, of recycled paper into the various layers, depending on what property you're looking to try and achieve. And so the fiber from liquid, from liquid packaging goes into that. The plastic products, we, we don't process in this factory, but we sell that to others. We're converting them into um, plastic molded products. Obviously, Impact needs to source liquid cartons from somewhere. Currently, a large volume is sourced from the carton and packaging manufacturers as discarded material. The remaining volumes are sourced from people and companies which sort and divert material from landfill and at source of disposal. Another stream comes from direct disposal into dedicated recycling streams, such as demarcated plastics and paper bins. In Impact, uh, we run a number of post-consumer projects. We have a green bag project that runs in the suburbs of, of Johannesburg and Coralini and Pretoria. 
we distribute um, bags to households and we ask people to separate uh, their waste products into the recyclable paper paper products and um, the rest into, into the disposal. So we collect those um, and we're actively driving a campaign to, to encourage more people to, to participate in that program. We've been running activation campaigns at a lot of our, our shopping centres in the areas that we operate. We've also run uh, some promotional campaigns with uh, Tetra Pak uh, in combination with them, promoting the, the recyclability of the product. I and mean, for many years, it wasn't recyclable in South Africa. And we went out telling people, don't give us your liquid uh, packaging products. We're now trying to change that message. And that's obviously taking a bit of time for the message to think home that these products are, are really well recyclable. So what we ask people to do is when, it's, when the product, when you're finished with your milk, milk carton or your juice carton, to open the lid flatten the, the box out, close the lid again, and then pack it into the, the packet and, re and return it to us. So apart from the, the curbside collection projects, we run projects at schools and community centres where we, we leave our runny bins, which is a big green um, igloo type container, and we ask people just to pop the liquid packaging cartons into that. Um, and then throughout um, most of the major cities, in fact, almost all throughout South Africa, there's someone who's collecting recyclable material either at a buyback centre or a drop-off centre um, and we'd ask people to drop off their liquid cartons at those centres as well. And what's interesting about that process is that all the way through there is, you know, um, a product that was going to go to landfall is now going into a stream where someone's collecting it and getting paid for collecting it, someone's transporting it to the mill, someone's bailing it um, and then the mill is employing people to operate this equipment. So you've gone from a process where people were discarding this item and you're paying the municipality through your rates and taxes to take it away to a process where it's actually adding economic value and creating you know, hundreds of jobs in the process. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.